Okay, guys, part four of our Civil War Nearpod homework assignment over break. And this is going to be a very quick part. Um, it's Lincoln. So as we talked about earlier, everyone knows Lincoln. Everyone realizes Lincoln's a great president. But if you ask most people, why is Lincoln a great president? They'll probably say, oh, he, he freed the slaves or, oh, he fought during, he was the president during the Civil War. But very few people really understand the nuances that Lincoln dealt with, how savvy a politician he was, how adroit he was in, in what he did, how he balanced both uh, international affairs, uh, fighting the war, uh, political realities of dealing with Congress, uh, a Congress that was becoming uh, increasingly opposed to him, especially during the darkest days of the war when things weren't going well. Um, Lincoln was this incredibly brilliant, uh, thoughtful uh, man who who had to deal with so much. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that he is he did as president that is somewhat controversial. And of course, he's Lincoln. And he's successful. But what he does is, is like I said earlier, fairly controversial. And some would say out and out unconstitutional. Lincoln himself, one of my favorite quotes, Lincoln himself all but admitted that he was acting in, in a way that, that certainly stretched the Constitution when he said, if I violate the Constitution, I do so to save it. So let's go through a few of the things that made Lincoln such an extraordinary president and, of course, leads to this debate about Lincoln and, and his constitutionality. So what does Lincoln do? Well, as I said earlier, Lincoln uses this very legalese argument to say, this isn't a war. The Civil War is not a war. Well, of course, the Civil War is a war. Uh, it's the biggest war in American history. About 650,000 people died in the Civil War almost uh, almost half of all American casualties in all wars combined. Um, if the Civil War is not a war, then there is no such thing as a war, right? Uh, of course it's a war. But Lincoln says it's not a war. It's an insurrection. It's a rebellion. Now, why would Lincoln say something so ridiculously uh, incorrect and so obviously wrong? Because the president has the power to handle insurrections and rebellions the Congress has the power to handle um, war. So Lincoln's uh, definition of the Civil War is, is a good example of that savvy political astuteness that I, that I mentioned before. So Lincoln orders troops without congressional approval. Uh, and he declares martial law in some of these border states, most notably Maryland, um, Washington, D.C. is essentially an island surrounded by Maryland. Uh, if Maryland fell, the capital of the United States would have been surrounded by enemy territory. So Lincoln is particularly uh, harsh in his dealings with Maryland. A good example of that was his actions in withdrawing habeas corpus. Habeas corpus is the right to a quick and speedy trial. And uh, it, it's considered to be the most important right in a democracy, because if you don't have that right, then political enemies can be just locked up indefinitely. Lincoln suspends habeas corpus uh, in Maryland. Later, the Supreme Court will declare Lincoln's actions uh, in, in a case called Ex Part Mil uh, I'm sorry, in a in re Merriman, uh, unconstitutional uh, in that he suspended the habeas corpus. Later, uh, Lincoln will use military tribunals as opposed to civilian courts in a court case called Ex Part Milligan. Again, the Supreme Court is going to say Lincoln uh, violated the Constitution, that whenever there is an opportunity to have a civilian court, a civilian should go to civilian court. Uh, a civilian shouldn't go to military tribunals. Uh, a little less, a little less controversial, but Lincoln spends money for the war without proper appropriations from uh, Congress. So Lincoln is this incredibly strong president. Uh, and as I said earlier, he starts his presidency off 
in, in this incredibly strong way. Um, and these are only a handful of the most important examples of this. So Lincoln, is Lincoln a great president? Is Lincoln uh, a president who abused his authority? Another interesting thing to note in terms of this whole uh, assessing Lincoln is sometimes there's, there's this idea, what makes leaders great? Is it the man or is it the time? You know, had Lincoln been born during a different time period where there wasn't such a crisis, would Lincoln have gone down in history? And, and I always like to point this out to, to stand up for Lincoln a little bit is that if you look at the two presidents that become, that come before and after Lincoln. So the president right before Lincoln is James Buchanan. He's widely considered to be one of the worst presidents in American history. And if you look at the president who comes directly after Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, he also is widely considered to be one of the worst presidents uh, in American history. So during this time where there's a, a fair amount of, of similar crisis, I mean, it's right before the Civil War, it's right after the Civil War, but it's certainly a, a period of crisis. These two men were unable to do the job. Uh, Buchanan was ineffective and in many ways uh, hands off, uh, not proactive. And Johnson did not have any of that political savviness that Lincoln had. He attempts to do things. He attempts to be a, an active president, but he lacks all of Lincoln's political expertise. So the question is, and as I said, luckily, you know, I'm sure we're ready to, to get going on our vacation. So we probably want to finish this activity. But um, that brings us to one of the last questions and one of the last activities. Does Lincoln deserve to be considered as a great president or a dangerous president? And in the Nearpod, uh, I, I give you a, net, a, a specific thing to fill out. So you can do that there. Um, for no other reason than I just like these images, I just here's a picture of Lincoln that I just think is is a great one. Uh, of course, you know, he's, he's such a... He's such an icon of American history. It's easy to forget that that he's a man and an actual guy, you know, who who had to fight and and work through these horrible problems. Um, all right, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. You guys have an absolutely great break. I will see you next year, as as they say. And remember, this doesn't have to be done until the Wednesday we get back. So if you have the time to do it before, uh, great. But if not, you'll have a couple days to finish it up. See ya. Bye.